are you guys doing today? Today we are going to be installing a trailer sway control kit. And this is a sway bar for your trailer connected to your, your tow vehicle and your trailer. Now you're asking, I know right now, well, what is that? What does it do? How does it do it? And why do I need it? Well, these are just some of the questions that we're going to hopefully answer today for you and uh, see if you might want to install one of these. It's kind of an interesting uh, installation process. Okay, let's get to that. Okay, those are four great questions and we're going to try to answer them together. Of course, always remember, I am not an expert. We're going to learn together. I'm going to share with you what I've discovered or by talking to other people or online or whatever so you don't have to go through it and I typically share my mistakes if I make any so you don't have to endure them so remember I'm not an expert I'm learning just like you are the other thing that I would like to uh, be sure to mention is thank you very much for subscribing liking commenting and, and hitting that little bell for uh, notification I can't thank you enough for doing that. That's what makes us able to be able to produce these videos. So please continue doing that and, and know that we really, really, really do appreciate it. Okay, this is the RV trailer hitch anti sway bar kit video. All right. What is an anti sway bar? Well, it's it's kind of exactly what the name uh, suggests it's a bar that helps your RV trailer hitch not sway back and forth as easily. Um, it doesn't completely reduce it or to, or to the point of it's no longer there, but it uh, helps to limit it. Okay. Well, how does it do it? Okay. It does it because what we do is we hook this thing to the trailer and to the trailer hitch at kind of an oblique angle so there's two points of of towing not just the uh, trailer hitch but the trailer hitch and this thing are kind of side by side in the angle and what happens is right here is a uh, bar that squeezes what is essentially a brake pad just like you have on your car on your front brakes and it squeezes down onto this bar and makes it so that this bar here doesn't move very easily okay so right now it does but as I tighten it down now it doesn't it will still move with the force of the car but not near as easily okay which causes the back end to not want to sway move and wiggle as easily does that make sense uh, that's kind of what it is and kind of how it does it, but do you need one really? Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. You can actually impact how much your trailer sways, wiggles in certain conditions, wind or whatever, by how you load it, whether you put the load closer to the tongue or closer to the rear, I'll let you look that up. It's pretty phenomenal the difference you can make by where and how you load your trailer. This helps in another way, but the thing that made me decide that maybe I wanted to get one of these was how these help in windy conditions, crosswind conditions. And my wife and I, we like to go out to West Texas. We like to go to the Great Plains. We also like to travel to uh, the coast and drive along the coastlines where it's also windy. It's windy in West Texas, windy in the Great Plains. And we've also found ourselves in situations, say driving home from a camping trip, when we're in incredible windy, rainy weather. And we would like to have as much stability or help in regards to keeping everything lined up as possible. Crosswind conditions is where this, this helps that for the reason I want one. Now let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. Okay, the, uh, hopefully you're looking at a, um, a diagram that shows when the crosswind hits the side of your vehicle it tends to push the lighter uh, trailer to one side and when it does that it tries to make your uh, your towing vehicle like the steering uh, wheels of it and will tend to try to push it around 
and make it go to the left. It does all kinds of weird things on, on your vehicle. And what happens is the driver compensates for the trailer trying to push the car to the left by steering to the right. When that happens now, the, the trailer is trying to go this way and the car is trying to go this way and you can get this weird oscillation back and forth. By having this thing, it slows down the movement, I guess you could say, and uh, see how that works there? The, uh, the car doing all that kind of thing and the trailer and all that. You, you kind of get the idea of what's happening. And by having this device there in two places, this in one place and the trailer in another, and then it being slowed down by this by this brake bar, I guess you could say, then the trailer tends to try to stay more in line with your vehicle, and I'm thinking that's a good thing. So that's that's what it is, how it does it, and you'll have to make up your own mind whether or not you feel like you need one. And you probably don't with a relatively small trailer like ours, it's only about 20 feet long or something like that, in normal conditions, normal driving. Now, we had an incident uh, a few trips back where we were driving down this four lane road in Lockhart and a, a lady in a pickup truck, for some reason, don't know why, but she suddenly swerved, coming in this direction, suddenly swerved over and tried to uh, uh, hit us head on. I mean, it was scary. My wife was driving. I was sitting over there, and all I could do was go like that, you know. Well, because she obsessively keeps checking that uh, rear camera that we have, she knew that this lane over here, or to the right of us, had no cars in it whatsoever. She whipped over to the right, and then that car came in, and then she and she kind of went a little bit past that, and uh, and then she had to whip it back to the to the left. And I I kind of looked in the mirror to see what our trailer was doing, and it kind of went flop flop, but not too bad. Okay, but having one of these. Who knows how much that would have helped us or whatever, I don't know. But she did a great job of avoiding our imminent deaths, it, it, it appears to me. But uh, I'm wondering if one of these would have kept it from flopping like it did. But then again, because she had such control of it, it, it really didn't matter. All right, um, where do you get one of these things? Well, you can pick up one just like I have here uh, at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is one of our favorite places to get RV stuff. And uh, it's pretty inexpensive. As you can see right there, it, uh, it says Sway Control Kit there, and it's only like $27 and change. What a deal, okay? So if it helps even a little bit, that's worth that money, wouldn't you say? Well, that's not the whole story. The, uh, there it is right there, uh, just sitting on our uh, trailer tongue. 27 bucks, heck of a deal. All right, it comes with uh, this, these really good uh, uh, instructions, and uh, everybody I go online said the instructions are really good, but honestly, it's so straightforward, I really didn't use the instructions that much at all. The, the instructions are real simple. You mount a, a tab on the side of your, uh, on the side of your tow hitch for this part to connect to, and then this connects to a, a ball that's on your tongue. And these two things, or however you want to put it, maybe these two things initially need to be 24 inches apart. Uh, and that's the hard part, just measure that 24 inches and line it up. But now, it's, it's not quite that easy, okay? 24 inches, that's all you got to do. What you have to do is you have to mount a, uh, uh, a plate on there that has the ball for, for this end on it, okay? And there I am in the video uh, getting it out and you'll get a glimpse of it. It, it has uh, two things that I'm getting out of there. One is this tab that's gonna go on here and the other one is the plate that's gonna go on that other end. Now. I say that this thing only cost us $27. It also says on the box how easy it is to install. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's real easy to put on and to stick on there when you when you need to do it. Uh, it's just like the, uh, uh, the video is showing right there. You put it on, put the pan in, put the other end on, put a pan in, you're done, okay? But getting it to this point, 
is almost impossible if you don't have your own stick welder in your garage or shop ready to go. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this tab that's on here is just is just a bar that needs to be attached to your trailer hitch. Okay, uh, now. What I did in order to see if this was all going to work, I'm a big fan of dry fitting things together, and that's exactly what I did. I took some clamps and I took the components that I needed, and I didn't weld them on there and have to measure. I dry fitted them together to see if I could get them to work. I did the same thing with that uh, ball that's mounted on the uh, trailer tongue. I simply clamped them all together in the place where they needed to be. Notice 24 inches from the other end. And then I clamped this bar ugh, right here, or whatever you want to call it. They call it a tab, I think, uh, onto here. And then I wanted to see, well, now, how is this going to work okay? So I took it and, uh, and set it up, put it on there. Works great. Okay. I mean, everything's just clamped together, but now I know how to do it. The neat thing about clamping that ball and that plate to the side of the trailer hitch, normally if... Uh, someone's telling you how to drill holes in heavy metal and stuff like that, you put a, a you hit it with a center punch you know, or some type of punch to make an indentation so that when you drill, the uh, drill doesn't, you know, move all around like it wants to do, okay? And it'll have a point to start and dig in. Well, when I'm drilling something and I have the plate that I'm going to be mounting there, I'll put the plate there and then I'll drill through the hole of the plate that's provided, and that keeps my drill bit from wandering, okay? Now I'll show you here in just a second. There it is, that's what I do. And so I drill right through there, and then I can put one of the screws that they provide in, in there, and um, maybe drill another hole just to be on the safe side, but then after that I can take the clamps off, and with it right there, drill it in, put in a screw, drill a hole, put it in, right there like that. So that's the easy way to do it. I did this also when I installed our front uh, scissor stabilizing jacks. I just jacked it up against the bottom of, of our RV. The hole was already there. Drilled in. Drilled through the hole. The hole stabilizes the bit. That's something I like to do. Alright, now here you're going to see how I uh, actually mounted the, uh, the, tab, the tab on here just for my dry fit. Watch. I got it out, I put it there, and I uh, clamped it down to see if that's, how, that's, how well that's going to work. Okay, great. Now, I switch around to the other side, and I put the uh, little trailer hitch ball that's only like a little one inch ball on, uh, on, on it, but unfortunately, I'm doing this in the uh, uh, storage lot where we store our RV, <laughs> and this has always been a, a fear of mine. It's right next to a big drainage uh, grate, okay? And sure enough, as I'm putting all this together, I drop, I drop the uh, lock washer. Watch this. Okay, I'll get the little ball out. And I'm going to put it in that tab where I've got it clamped on there so I can do my dry fit test. And, and, okay, this is the part I didn't want to have to tell you about. But here's the thing, all right? What you have to do is they, they say on the box, easy to assemble, and somewhere in some fine print it says uh, uh, something about welding this plate onto, or this tab, onto your trailer hinge. Um, yeah, uh, you have to do that. Now you can't use a little wire welder. This is much too heavy a metal. While a wire welder doesn't get it hot enough, you need a stick welder. I don't have a stick welder. All right. And so I had to find somebody to do it. I had a couple of other options. You can actually buy a uh, trailer hitch that has this tab already on it. Put your ball on it and you're good to go. It costs about $40 or more to buy one of those trailer hitches. Uh, the only problem with mine though, and there it is right there, $47.99. I think you can find them cheaper, probably around $40. Bucks. You can get them, Home Depot has they, says they have them, of course, but they don't really have them in the store. you got to order them or something. Um, but there it is. There is the trailer hitch with the stabilizer bar tab already on it, ready to go. Unfortunately for me, um, 
buying now buying that hitch meant I'd have to also buy a uh, uh, a brand new big ball here because I got this three-way hitch and my ball here is not bolted onto it this is all welded so not only would I have to buy the trailer hitch with the tab on it I'd have to buy either a trailer hitch with the tab and the ball on it or I have to go buy another ball too so this was gonna cost me another fifty sixty dollars on top of that twenty seven dollars in order to make it so I could do it well I asked around asked around asked around found somebody that had a, uh, a stick welder and he welded it for me and uh, uh, and but look at this I could get one with it already on there for just hundred and fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents I wasn't gonna do that okay here we go this is my buddy welding it on and uh, and he did a fantastic job I mean to tell you really great you know he's no slouch he's been doing welding commercial welding for 50 years or more okay and so he welded it and as you can see he did a great job I sprayed it with a little black Krylon I just happen to have in my garage and it's welded on there like nobody's business there we go take a look at that I was real proud of that but still um, okay once I got that done the uh, there it is the rest was easy you know I slid this thing into my into my receiver and I uh, took this thing put it on there used pins and bada bing bada boom yeah look, look at that welding job I'm so proud of that job there we go. all right there we go okay enough of that all right there it is being ready to uh, be all connected up it is it is attached to the uh, I guess you can say rear end of it like that and then we're gonna go put the uh, uh, pin in the other one and we are set up ready to go it's a uh, it's almost parallel but not quite and even if it was parallel that would still be two places of attachment and this thing would slow down hopefully that oscillation when needed when you're just driving down the road and you're not turning you're not swaying you're not doing anything this puts no pressure stress or friction on this thing at all it's just everything's lined up and you're going you know straight level flight there and you've uh, got it made so only if the trailer wants to oscillate back and forth does this come into play this thing come into play and so we're excited about having it uh, mainly because we tend to travel to places that are windy and we have these crosswinds and and if you've ever driven a trailer down I-20 in that West Texas crosswind you want all the help you could get that's just all there is to it so for $27 plus a little bit of money and a couple other things uh, we got one and so I hope that helps you and if it did I hope that you will subscribe comment uh, and hit that like button we appreciate that so much and we hope you'll come back and visit us again thanks for being here